Hello and welcome to my Vivi Beta Graphics tutorial. My name is Takuma Nakata. I'm an interaction designer based in Kyoto. And in today's tutorial, we will learn how to create uh, the Zope Rope effect. So this is a continuous uh, tutorial. I have a episode one, uh, which I uploaded this Tuesday. So if you haven't watched that one, please watch that one before following this tutorial because we're using the same patch from the last one and then we're gonna edit that one and so I'll put this link below uh, so that you all know where it is uh, by the way how many of you have watched our uh, worldwide Vivi meetup that happened this Friday it was really interesting and also here I announced uh, this upcoming webinar which I'm gonna be holding which is called procedural graphics with Vivi beta and it's at notice I'll put this link below as well and we will be creating this visual uh, from scratch. I should show you the bigger ones. Okay, so we'll be learning how to create this visual from scratch. So I'll share the entire process on how I created this. And it's going to be a three hour workshop. And if you've been following my YouTube tutorial, uh, mostly with, if you've already followed Field Trip, you should be able to join this. If you're uh, brand new with VVV, it might be a bit hard, so I would highly suggest you to install at least your Field Trip packs and make sure that it's working. Um, so it's a three hour workshop. It's going to happen on August 21st, and this is, I think, uh, CT time. And uh, yeah, these are the requirements. These are the things that we're gonna cover. And what's different than my YouTube tutorial is that this YouTube tutorial has been more like a separate 20 minutes tutorial. It's been really short. I've been trying to make it short. So there's a lot of uh, small things that I've been missing during uh, my tutorial. But in this course, you should be able to learn and see the entire process from scratch and how I make stuff. So it will be way more good for learning. And also we can, you can ask them question to me directly if there's anything that you were missing or like something that you want to try out I might also be able to answer that during the time so uh, please uh, I'm very welcome for people to join there's 15 seats I think it's not a big amount but in the same time it's it costs $40 per person to join uh, 40 euro actually so it's not that cheap but I mean yeah it will be a big support if you can join this webinar. So I'll put this link below. If you're interested, uh, please join. Okay, so uh, this is what we're creating for today. Let's get started. So from our pre so from our previous uh, tutorial, I've tweaked a little bit. So in our last tutorial, I was connecting a file stream here. But uh, because this did this visual that I was connecting here didn't have an alpha, so instead of that, I recreated a render here. So this one is using the render MRT, and then Ray Marching Basics, so that I get so that I make sure the background color is alpha zero, and then I added some Julia SDF and integration noise, and then I intersect around so that I get this kind of visual out. So this is what I'm getting from here. Oh, I forgot to assign the resolution. I just make it 500 to 500 square size. And then I also added a blend to the constant so that I can get uh, alpha from the ray marching one. So uh, where is my render? Oh, here we go. So this is what I'm seeing here. So this is the array from our last one. Also, at the end of the tutorial, I set the steps to 120, but make sure you bring it back to 30, and then resolution to six by five so that you don't have too much of the grid. Uh, okay. So as you can see, if I disconnect this blend node, the background color will keep it black and uh, we want this to be in alpha, so I had to connect this blend node here. Okay, so uh, let's get started with today's process. So first of all, I'll create another render because what I wanted to do today is I want to create an array of a quad. Uh, so not just uh, in 2D plane, I, wanted, I want to create a 3D uh, spread of quad. So I need this one and then I'll need an aspect ratio. So I'll connect this one to the render state. 
and then I'll make I'll use a group node, group node, and then I'll connect this one with axis and grid. It's always good to have this because you get lost with 3D space and we also need a camera. Okay. Okay, here we go. So now we've got this. Okay, everything's working fine. So I want to make this one a little bit bigger, so I'll just move this one here. Then I'll scale this one down. Then I'll make this one bigger. Okay, great. So this is our render for today. And first of all, what I want to do is I want to make uh, this constant array to be connected here. But right now, it's in a 2D grid, and I want to make this a 3D grid. So what I would do is I'll disconnect this translate, and then I'll create another translate. Uh, translate translate transform and then I'll connect this one to constant array I'll move this one a little bit here and bring this one up and I'll create a linear spread so this one linear spread and then I'll connect this one to the Z and then amplify this to 30 so now I've got 3D uh, three, uh, 30 grid uh, layered on, on Z axis but as you can see, something is really weird. And this is because the, the render doesn't have the depth buffer. So what I have to do is press Control I, open up the InfoSpector for the render, and then make sure that this de depth buffer mode on, and the, uh, for the render is set to standard. Then we should be able to see something like this, which is, uh, as you can see, now I only see the front layer, however, it's still a bit weird. And this is because, so as you can see from, from through this first layer, you can't really see what's behind. But if you're looking from this side, it, it, you can see it. And this was the biggest uh, reason why I had to sp uh, split this tutorial to two, because this function, to, to learn this function is the most important part. So what I have to do is I need to connect the blend node but then the blend node is not the render state, the normal one, but we will be using the blend render state advanced. And this is important, so I, I want you guys to uh, remember this. So we'll disconnect this one, and then we'll reattach the, uh, the new blend node. What we'll have to do here is, first of all, alpha to coverage has to be on, then the alpha will be on. So as you can already see, now we're getting the right result. So now uh, you only see the front layer. Wait, I'm going to change the camera value to zero and then I'm going to make it a little bit closer. So as you can see, now the the problem with the, that you only see the first layer is solved. Now you can see like this depth texture and whenever the alpha is zero, then you see through the rest of the texture. So this is a result that we want to have. And also, uh, if you go to the backward, you don't really see the, the texture. And I want to avoid this as well. So I'll just put a rasterizer. So this rasterizer render state, not advanced one. And then I'll connect this one below the blend node. And then I'll change the rasterizer mode to no cool simple. By doing this, you should be able to see it from the both sides, from the front, from the back. Okay, we're getting really close. So by doing this, we can get a really nice result. I think I'll lower down the linear spread value so that we get more tight. And I want to add another effect. So right now, since I'm not moving the quad, uh, the texture is being updated from the front to back. And I want the first front layer to always be the new uh, texture and to do so I need to add another linear spread oh wait no what I have to do is I have to add an LFO to the phase for the linear spread so I need this to keep moving on the z-axis so I need to keep adding values to the phase which would be possible by connecting the LFO so as you can see now uh, 
it's been updated, but I think there's still a problem. And this happens because uh, this LFO for the index and LFO for the linear spread has to be synced. And we can do that by connecting the reset mode, reset uh, toggle to both of them and click this. So now I should be having the first is the recent one it's not right yet that's because we have to change the central hmm. I'm not getting it totally right Oh, okay, so this is it. Uh, so I had to reverse the LFO node, sorry. So what I did was I changed this one to subtract, but it could be whatever maximum or anything, just, just delete this one, it's not that important. So now that I made, I toggled the reverse on the LFO on this linear spread as Z transform, then we got the first layer as the, the most recent uh, texture. So it, this one here and this one here is, as you can see, it's synced but still you see the desi texture. So now we're getting a really, really nice result. I want to change the color on the very much and basic a little bit to make it more interesting. So as you can see, if I add an HSL, for example, here, and then if I fade this one to here, and then another, add another LFO to the hue value, and then I'll lower down the lightness. As you can see, since I'm caching the entire texture, we get this really weird gradient effect as well. Yeah, so it's working now. So the most important part was this one. So use the blend node, uh, blend advanced node instead of the normal one. And then uh, also make sure that you connect the LFO to the linear spread so that we get the first front image synced to the recent one. And then whenever you it sometimes get buggy like LFO here and LFO here sometimes loses the sync by get, having a drop frame and then if that happens just make sure you click this one and it should be back to the right result so now if I maximize this to 120 I should be able to have 120 oh I need to connect 120 to here then we can actually get 120 oh this is too too much Yeah, let's lower it down. It's a bit too psychedelic. And then I can change this linear spread back to one. Then we can get this kind of like interesting. Oh, and I need to change this one to 120 as well. Yeah, but then as you can see, I think my computer doesn't handle 120 for this. So I just bring, bring this back to 30 and then everything back to 30. Then I'll put this one to point two as well. Okay, so this was the first step. So this is like the Z uh, delay texture. It's sort of like SDF, but I think it's a bit different and it's more interesting. So this was the result we wanted to have today. In addition to that, I'll also share how I did the zoot rope effect, which I showed on my last tu uh, last tutorials video, like in the beginning. I used a circular spread, and then I connected this one to the translate. So I'll delete. Uh, the linear spread just for now and then I'll connect the circular spread with depth 30 and then I connect this one to the uh, Y and Z axis by doing this we should get this kind of like uh, quad located on the on this, uh, like a circular spread but we also need to rotate uh, the the each quad and to do so we need to use the linear spread and the linear spread and then we'll change this one to 30 as well and then I'll connect this one below the transform translate and then I'll check okay so I need to connect this linear spread to X and as you can see immediately we should get this kind of array that it's the all the quads are facing to the right direction so once this is done, 
what I'll be I will do is I need to move this one make a minute move this one back here what I will be doing is I want to put my camera on the right direction so right now it's here but I want to move it upwards what I would do is I'll change the initial interest of the camera so make sure you press R and left click on your render so that you get the control from here and then I'll locate my camera somewhere around here oh and I also want this guy to keep rotating as well so I connect the output from LFO to the phase oh this is wrong <laughs> Okay, so uh, yeah, I need to connect this one to the linear spread as well. Okay, great. So now, as you can see, I've got this zoetrope kind of effect working in real time, and uh, I think the near plane is too close, so I can crop the near plane so that I I don't see the the quad like in front of it. So I can I can crop the near camera thing. Okay, by doing this, as you can see, we got a really nice Zotro kind of effect. So this guy is actually rotating, but because we mapped the LFO and things like that, you don't really see that it's rotating. But if we change, for example, the foreground FPS to 12, we get this kind of like slow stop motion kind of effect. So by changing uh, the frame rate, we can actually get like, if we stay, extend this to 60, then we get this really fast Uh, rotating effect as well so we can control the zote rope by changing the fps for vvvv which is really interesting depending on what kind of visual we feed like the visual we're feeding here right now is not that effective so you don't really see what the difference is but depending on what kind of visual you feed here you should get a really interesting result So this is the way how I created uh, my zot rope effect and if you're like for example I did a circular zot rope but if you're interested in doing it sideways you just have to change the circular spread to sideways and then you should get a sideways zot rope or if you want to get the Z one you just have to adjust the linear spread again and you can really play around with this so yeah, that was it for today. Uh, thanks for watching. And in my next tutorial next Tuesday, I'm planning to create a slit scan effect tutorial. So please keep your eyes on that as well. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.